This video is ostensibly a, a review of the SID FX Dual SID hardware. We'll we'll get there in a little bit, I promise. But bear with me first, because I, I feel like I need to give everyone a little bit of background on how this relates to my perceptions of the SID. The way that we perceive the world can greatly affect how we look at things, and, and the way that I perceive things might be a little bit different from the way that another Commodore user might. So, I'm American, and in seed terms, I'm a fairly young scener. I was born in 1978, and when I got my C64 in 1986, or maybe 1987 at this point, there's kind of a question, but either way, I was only eight or nine years old. A lot of the big players in the scene today were already cutting their teeth in the cutthroat cracking scene of the mid and late 80s, but back then, I was just still a kid playing games, and I wasn't even aware of the scene as an entity until at least 1991. Two things happened in 1991 which changed my view of what the C64 was and, and what it could do. One of those things was Lodestar, the, the disc magazine, to which I received a free three-month promotional subscription. Lodestar treated the C64 as a musical instrument in and of itself, and used to publish jukeboxes full of one C64 composer's SID music. Before this, I, I hadn't really considered music as a thing that the C64 was particularly good at. Music on the C64, to me, was just some bleeps and bloops, and at the time, my favorite song that the 64 could do was the Japanese national anthem from Winter Games. This was largely because what we Americans called SID music were songs that were written for Compute SID Player, a system created by Craig Chamberlain and Harry Bratt. These files ended in .mus and, more often than not, merely skimmed the surface of what might actually be considered music. The other thing that happened in 1991 was Q-Link. q, -Link. q -Link was a network, a pre-AOL sort of thing, for the C64. SID player music was really big on Q-Link, especially using SuperQ, which was this sort of enhanced people connection interface. With it, users could send SID player files back and forth, and it would actually play while you were chatting. They used to run these guess that tune games with the stuff, and, and you could never really guess the song because they sounded so raunchy and unlike the original songs. It was all good fun, and even I tried to get into it a little bit by writing my own SIDs, but let's not talk too much about that. It was here on, on Q-Link that I first became aware of the concept of having dual SID chips in a Commodore 64. People talked about it in the chat rooms and exchanged schematics on how to build your own, and there were a fair amount of files available for download for Craig Chamberlain's SID player that supported stereo SIDs through a newer version of the player called Stereo Player. By the time that I became aware of this, there was already a commercial solution in the SID Symphony cartridge, though my general attitude towards SID music relegated that to a pretty low position of my list of things that I want to have. Then came the demo scene. The demo scene turned on its head everything that I thought the C64 could and couldn't do. It was looking at the demos that had been uploaded to Q-Link by groups like Style and MDA that made me realize that the 64 was capable of more than garbage versions of Oregon Trail and, and the farts and whistles that budget games made. 
The music in these demos had bass lines and drum sections, and it sounded like it was using more than just the three channels that were built into the SID. The reason I'm, I'm giving you all of this exposition is because it's important to set the scene for what the SID FX brings to the table. For a kid in 1991, having two SIDs in your C64 seemed like an awesome idea, but with a few inherent issues. One, both of the solutions at the time were inconvenient, one monopolizing the machine's expansion port, and the other requiring some proficiency with a soldering iron. And neither addressed the fact that there were very few pieces of software that would even make use of a second SID. Enter the SIDFX. The SIDFX is an internal, that is, it, it's not a cartridge, uh, dual SID solution for the C64. It was designed and built by Lotus of Ancients, based off an idea by Devia of Ancients, and it enables you to add a second SID to your machine without having to do any soldering or modifications to the actual machine. It comes with a group of wires that, that you'll connect via test clips to the legs of certain chips in the computer, which will enable it to designate where in memory the second SID is going to live. There are also two switches for selecting pre-programmed configurations, or for selecting which SID is being used if you're in mono, and also a stereo mini DIN audio out port. I still have my original glorious C64, but for the purposes of this video, I will be installing it on a Commodore 128. And while you don't have to modify the case, I'm choosing to do so in order to accommodate the external switches and... <clears throat> Fine! I'll never ever do another stupid thing. Good night! Uh, so, so, for the purposes of this video, I'll be installing the SIDFX in, in my original C64. This is the machine that I got in Christmas of 1986, or, or maybe 1987, and which has been with me ever since, with the exception that I did have to change the case, and the case that it has right now already has a hole drilled in it from a previous owner that had put in a reset button. Installation is incredibly easy. You, you pop your two SIDs into the SIDFX, and then the SIDFX pops into the socket where your SID would normally live. Connect the wires to the pins of the chips, not the legs, like I said before, if you want to be able to use the full functionality of the device. The, the switches and audio output are they're, they're optional, really, and, and it can be used without them. But because I wanted to make full use of the SIDFX, and since my case already has a hole in it, I went ahead and hooked that all up. Now, because this C64 is my sweetest, most precious baby. I'm taking extra care not to, uh, yeah, not to do that again. Shit. One other modification that I made was to to cut a little notch out of the keyboard frame. I'm I'm kind of a sucker for heat sinks, especially on older hardware like the C64. So I like having them on as many chips as I can. With the SIDFX installed, there is very little space between the keyboard frame and the SIDs on the 64C. While it's probably perfectly okay to let them live like that, I still want to have some heat sinks on them. So I used a Dremel to cut a notch in the keyboard frame right above the SIDs, which gives me a little bit more clearance and provides room for a small heat sink on each chip. So enough about all this. How does it sound? sounds pretty freaking awesome is how it sounds and and not just when it's playing stereo SIDs either because 
because that's the other really cool thing about the SID FX, which, which sets it apart from a lot of the other dual SID solutions, in that you can actually have two different kinds of SID chips installed in just the one machine. For those needing a refresher, Commodore made two different kinds. The 6581 is what you'd find in early C64s and flat 128s, and the 8580 is the newer SID that they used in the shortboard 64Cs and the 128D or DCR or, or whatever people are calling it. There are a handful of differences between the two SID chips. Primarily the fact that the 6581 was made with the older and most process and used 12 volts on the Ultimately, I, I could throw pie charts and, and audio graphs and residence cutoffs and talk in circles for hours without adequately explaining the 8580 and 6581's difference. So let's just, let's just not do that. From my gut, though, I, I feel kind of like the 8580 has a, has a cleaner, crisper sound while the 80, 6581 has those earthy bass farts that the C64 and SID were really renowned for in the early days. They both sound good though, except when trying to play songs that were written for the other one. And, and that's really what the point of the SID FX is. I, I talk a lot in this about the stereo SID capabilities, but really the reason the SID FX exists is to provide a way for your computer, which generally by default has only one kind of SID built in, but it, it gives your computer a way to be able to auto-select the proper SID for the proper song. And it does this admirably. In its default mode, if you don't connect any of the switches, that's what it'll do. If you do connect the switches, you have the option to swap SIDs manually if for some reason the SID effect gets it wrong. Configuration is available via downloaded software, which is a small program you can throw on an SD card or a floppy disk, and it gives you control of the switch presets, where in memory your second SID is going to live, and also which version of the SID effects you're using which is actually useful right now because some early units have a bug which affects SID function and for which a fix is currently being offered by the SIDFX team. I highly recommend using the service, the, the repair service, if you have one of these SIDs. I sent mine in and I feel like I got it back before I even realized that I sent it out. 
I really can't say enough good things about this because honestly, the Sid FX has lived up to every expectation that I had for it, and then some. Even playing music that only needs a single Sid, it's it's fascinating to have them both playing at the same time. The difference in sound between the 8580 and the 6581 gives it sort of a stereoscopic feel and has made me really stop and, and listen to some of the old SIDS that I'd mostly forgotten about. The SID FX is currently for sale at SIDFX.dk and it runs about 460 Danish krona, which is about 50 bucks US, and includes the SID FX, the switches, cables, grabbers, bumpers, and whatever else you'd need for install, except of course the SIDs, which you need to supply yourself. The options that the SID FX bring to the table make a stock C64 an even more versatile machine than it already is. And because of that, it is one of my favorite add-ons to be developed for this machine.